Hello again. Um, so this is where it starts to get a little bit harder because we're trying to piece all our ideas together. Um, the first uh, rule that um, is a very important rule in handling um, a bunch of different things, a longer expression is called the sum and difference rule. And whenever you have plus or minus, you know, and it can, it can be more than two functions, um, what you're doing is you're looking at taking separate derivatives of each function. So just go to each term um, separated by the plus minus signs and do derivatives of each term as if it were a separate problem. Uh, for example, here we have uh, g of x is 6x to the fifth minus 5 halves x squared plus x plus 5. Um, if we do the derivative of each term then, starting with 6x to the fifth, um, applying that constant multiple rule, bringing the 5 down, we have 5 times 6 is 30. Take 1 off the power, so that changes to x to the fourth power. Write your minus sign down. And the second term, we bring the 2 down, so 5 halves times 2 is 5. Take 1 off the power, so that makes that x to the first power. Uh, remember, x um, is understood to have a 1 in front, so 1 in front, 1 power. So if I bring the 1 down, um, I just get x, and if I take 1 off the power, I get a 0 power now. And remember, for a standalone constant, the derivative is 0. So when I simplify everything, my final answer will be 30x to the fourth minus 5x, because we don't need to write to the first power. Remember, plus 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. Um, and then we don't need to write the 0. So this is, this is my sum and difference rule. Um, example, my first example. In this example, we have three terms, so um, but it's not in the best form yet. Um, so remember, you have to rewrite a square root as t to the one half power. So I need to, um, first of all, messed up here. I need to um, to change that. Uh, I don't know why I can't get rid of that plus sign, but we'll remember that's a, um, a minus sign. That's minus, you guys. Um, so uh, this term and the next one are in the correct form. Um, so I just need to rewrite the 60, 6 square root of t as 6t to the 1 half. Um, so now I'm ready to do a derivative. So my derivative will be, remember, uh, I'm going to do 6 times a half, so that makes that 3. And I'm going to do 1 half minus 1, so that makes that negative a half. It's minus. And for 4t to the third, um, bring the power down. So 4 times 3 is 12. Take 1 off of the power. And remember, if it's a standalone constant, that derivative is 0. So my final answer is 3t to the negative a half minus 12t squared. This problem is not in the correct form either because you have to have everything multiplied out to be able to apply the sum and difference rule. So we'll need to FOIL this out. So if I FOIL this out, 2x times 3x squared is 6x to the third power. Uh, 2x times 2 is 4x. 1 times 3x squared is 3x squared and 1 times 2 is 2. I don't see any terms that I can collect, so I'm going to go straight to the derivative here. So my derivative uh, will be 18x squared for the first term, plus 4 for the second term, plus 6x, and then plus 0. So leaving the 0 off, you have 18x squared plus 4 plus 6x is my final answer there. And I could write that in order, but that's good enough. Okay, what we have now is a fraction, a quotient, whatever you want to call it, but this is not in the correct form either. Remember, we can't have any division in our problem. We have to have total pluses and minuses. So one way to do this is to just distribute that denominator across all the, all the numerators. So I have 12x cubed over 4x minus, and then my 8x squared over 4x, and then plus 12x over 4x. 
then I simplify that. So that simplifies to 3x squared uh, minus 2x plus 3. And now it's in the form I want it in, just sums and differences. So my derivative, my f prime, going term by term, is going to be 6x minus 2 plus 0, or just 6x minus 2. My final example of the sum and difference rule is this one. And again, it's a division problem, and we, we can't have that. So my strategy here is to try to factor the numerator and denominator and hopefully simplify it down to a sum and a difference. So let's do that. So in the numerator, I can factor an x out. So when I factor an x out, I get x times x squared minus 6x plus 8. In the denominator, I can factor an x out, so I get x times x minus 2. And in the numerator, I can factor that quadratic further into x minus 4 times x minus 2. And my denominator is completely factored, so I'll just write that back down again. Now, once everything's factored, you can see that I can cancel some, some stuff out. So um, I'm going to cancel the x is out and the x minus 2 is out. So that simplifies my function to, to be just x minus 4, which is um, something I can do a derivative of using that sum and difference rule. So now I'm going to do my derivative because it's in the proper form. The derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of a constant, the negative 4 here, is just 0. So my answer is 1. My final rule in section 3.3 is the derivative of the natural exponential function, which we uh, represent by e to the x. Uh, simplest rule you'll ever find, the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. That's the only time I know of that the derivative of a function is equal to itself. So in other words, whenever you see e to the x, or in this case e to the v, you're just going to copy that back down again. Um, so my first example, I've got a, a sum, sum problem. So remember that we have to do um, the derivative by taking each term's derivative separately. So v to the 100's derivative using the power rule would be 100 uh, v to the 99. And here's my new rule, e to the v. You just write e to the v back down again. And 10, of course, has derivative 0. So that's um, showing you uh, that simple rule. Um, in, as one of the terms. Last example, you guys, for section 3.3, um, uh, we've got this sum and difference problem, which is in um, a good form. And so uh, when we do this one, we do it term by term. So my derivative is e to the w. Now this next one is 0 because there are no variables in this problem. So that's a constant. 8 is also a constant, so that's another 0. So my final answer for this one is only e to the w. That's the only problem that had a variable in it. Sorry, y'all. I had one more I wanted to show you. Um, this one is not in the proper form because it's division. So remember that we do these by splitting up the denominator. So I'm going to write this as e to the 2w over the denominator, e to the w, and then plus e to the w from the numerator divided by the denominator, e to the w. And that simplifies to e to the w because remember you're subtracting your exponents um, here. So uh, let's see if I change the color. So I'm taking these exponents and I'm subtracting them. So 2w uh, minus w is w. Okay. Um, and so now I'm going to go back to my blue and rewrite e to the w divided by e to the w. Well, they just cancel out. So that's when they cancel out. That gives me a 1. So my problem simplifies to a sum rule, e to the w plus 1. Now I do that derivative. So remember, the derivative of e to the w is just e to the w. The derivative of a constant that's by itself is 0. So I have e to the w plus 0, which is e to the w. And that is um, all the examples I have for you for section 3.3. So now try to do the homework. Good luck.